I'm about to head back to the UK, back for work again. Um, somebody actually brought up why I work uh, for a company uh, when I do so much as an entrepreneur. There's a very good reason for that. Um, when we were originally coming to the UK, um, you've got to have pay slips, you've got to have um, employment, you've got to meet the minimum criteria, and to do that, involves actually having a job. Um, now, the work I do um, is primarily around uh, asset management, asset surveying, condition surveys. Um, it's all mechanical and electrical as well as uh, fabric. Basically, I deal with buildings. Um, I also do project management, site management, and can manage projects up to a national scale. Um, Last year, for example, I was running the maintenance for RBS for Scotland. Um, now, the point with all this is that's what I can do. But I still had to go to um, meet this criteria for moving to the UK. As such, I had to, for the first time since, I don't know, uh, I think it's 1997, I've actually had to work for a company. Um, the thing with, is the company that I decided to work for is the same company I normally contract for. So it's basically going from the other side. Now, after being in the UK, I decided it wasn't where we want to be. I find it gone very racist in the last few years. Um, I find it's anti-immigration is all over the place because it's mainly pushed by the Daily Mail. I mean, we can trust anything in the Daily Mail. Um, it's all for agenda. Um, sadly, it's all been done to push people's minds away from incompetent governments and the state of the economy. So you blame the immigrant. So for me, I thought, I don't want to be here. I look at the house prices and I'm thinking that's 25 years. In Spain, I can pay it off. I could have two, three houses within five years. Let's put it that way, three to five years three or five years I could actually be retiring in Spain. So I thought, I don't know, we'll look at Spain. And also thought when I took the job on that the company could actually see where the potential was because I love um, difficult projects. I love creating um, better processes, uh, improving the way things are done. Um, and it's just not gone that way. Um, I can't really talk about it too much, but it's the company's not going in the direction I would like it to go in. And although it's not my company, no, um, I'm not an employee, if you know what I mean. If, if a company tells me you must do this, my response is normally there's no such thing as must, there's a choice. The choice is I quit, <laughs> you know, that's it. There's always more than one answer, so. I don't get bullied around by anybody and if you are at work then you're in the wrong job so um, it was just a decision for last year um, I was hoping we'd actually progress something into something where I could see a future um, moving up to director level showing a separate um, division in the company and progressing that. What's actually happened is it still seems that I'm where I was 10 years ago, if not gone back a bit further um, due to the way they structured the company. Um, it's not just me, but for, I'm not um, I'm not somebody you push down because quite simply I just move across and then go up, um, which is going back to contracting basically. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I don't begrudge it. I'm not. It's just the way the company is. Is it does it to a lot of people, unfortunately. Um, can't talk about it too much. Like I said, I still work for them. Um, but I will say that the entrepreneur stuff hasn't stopped. The system I have been developing is better than the one the company uses. Um, I have offered it to the company even for free. But they took no interest in it, so that's fine with me because at least I've given them the opportunity. They can't later come along and say, well, you've been developing X. Well, it's been in development for seven years. They can't take ownership of it. Um, 
the other side of that being that working with the company, I've met a lot more people because being in the Philippines with my niche, I got out of the loop a little bit. Um, I still had my main contacts that I've worked with for years, but being back in the loop, I've met up with a lot more people that are in the same um, environment, but also um, they understand the, the business because there's a lot of um, people in the industry that um, haven't got a clue. Now, I don't mean that in a bad way. Um, well, I do actually, because they, they do need to sort them out. But there's a lot of problems in the industry purely because you've got people that are actually technical propping up um, people that have gone and done a course. Um, it could be a case of somebody's done a degree, got no experience, no knowledge, um, but becomes a director. Or it could be a Dory in the cleaner that was made up to supervisor, then a project manager, then a contract manager who has no mechanical and electrical knowledge because she comes from the cleaning side of the business. So she does not understand what an AHU is, a handler unit. She does not understand the difference between a evaporator and a condenser. It's not her forte and it's not what she should be doing because at the end of the day, she's there to manage. But in this industry, you then rely on technical people to prop those people up because they don't know if they're compliant or not. Um, like fire alarm systems. How often do you have to test a fire alarm system? I know that, but she won't. And that, that's the point. This is what I do. Um, and I'm seeing the gaps opening up further. And with it, it's also opportunity. Also in the corporate world, what they do, um, you'll find companies will take somebody who's an expert in their field um, and they'll have two administrators, for example, that normally process all the paperwork and understand bits and pieces of what the person is doing. Um, then they have a call to save money and they'll get rid of the expert in their field and promote the administrators to managers. Now, the only information they have was fed from the person that was above them. Now, they may grasp the processes, they may understand X equals Y, but they don't know why X exists. You know, um, for example, if I said you needed to service an air conditioning unit every three months, what what's that mean to you? Because the fact is, it's not every three months. There's actually a six monthly and an annual in there, plus two three months list. But that's what makes up a year. But the difference, difference is the maintenance regimes. See, things like that, very simple. But if you've never learned about it or understood the process, um, you ain't going to fully understand how everything works. So on the entrepreneur side, I'm still going to be developing everything I've been doing. Um, I've had several companies approach me in the last few months. I've had several um, executives of other companies that have openings coming up that they want me to apply for. But at the same time, I'm still thinking with call centers developing in Spain, we've now got the floor area sorted out, got a business partner that knows the country very well. We've got somebody in Benidorm that's already setting up another call center that we we're going to be working alongside. Um, and they want me to be heavily involved in that one. Um, that means staying at home. But at the same time, compliance, asset management, asset surveying, 90% of it can be done remote. The data collection has still got to be done man on foot or woman on foot. But the, the actual processing, the management, the processes of uh, the maintenance regimes, extra, etc. can be done um, from Spain or anywhere. So there's a lot of stuff I've got on my mind at the moment. And I talk to somebody that really understands entrepreneurs. Um, and it was actually, he actually said the same as somebody did yesterday. Why am I working for a company? 
Um, and he, he, he said in a similar way, he's like, why are you wearing um, a blue shirt? A blue shirt is the, the Carillion uh, uniform. The reason was I was actually doing a 15 hour day that day and I didn't want to get my shirts dirty. <laughs> <laughs> but the the point he was making is I can't he couldn't understand why I still work for that company and I explained to him it's only for temporary but I was hoping they would actually drive something um, forward um, because the compliance and management stuff the energy management the um, asset management the compliance the asset surveying and it's quite a big thing and if you could actually get somebody to buy into it properly they would actually see the potential of so much can be done if it's done properly. Um, and I think I'm going to end up having to build it myself um, until I get somebody buy into it. And then once they do buy into it, I'll just say, what's this space? Anyway, but that's why I'm currently working for a company in the UK. But it's not a permanent thing. Uh, even less permanent the way they're driving it at the minute. But... I'm not complaining, you know, at the end of the day, it's a means to an end. Um, although the business isn't going in the direction I want it to, it's not my company. Um, if they decide they want to do it the way they do it, that's up to them. Um, nothing I can do about it, so I'm not going to complain about it. It's simple as that. All right, thanks for watching.